introverted noise. Hurry up, Daddy. Let's do it. Rolls out to the right. Five seconds to go in the first half. Dante fires deep to the left. Moss caught it at the 11, but now he oh, pitches look at it. This. To oh, Mo Williams. Williams. Touchdown! You got it, big Alright, welcome back to another episode of the Climbing the Pocket Podcast. It is a special episode because we have a special guest on with us tonight. And it's the uh, it's the offseason. The offseason is long. Figure we'll mix things up a little bit. We get a lot of shows, a lot of football talk, but we also want to get to know some of the people who are bringing us all of the content that we love to consume so much. A couple weeks ago, we had Matthew Collar on. This week, we have the man, the myth, the legend, quite possibly the hardest working person in and around the Vikings blogosphere, Andy Carlson, my man, how you doing? Hey, Jason, uh, glad to be here, man. Uh, what was what was that movie where they had like? Because you have a great voice, I've always wanted to tell you that. Uh, what was the movie where they had the DJ like sort of? Uh, oh no, uh, Warriors, yeah. Where uh, the, the they had this DJ that was off camera, and she just said this great voice. You're like that, except a dude. Hey, I'll take it, man. I'll take it. It's a very deep reference, but and uh, yeah, Warriors gonna come out and play. And you know, we also have the man who's uh, who might be driving an Uber right now. Uh, Yinka decided he wanted to pop in, say what's up as well. What's going on, Saxy Prince? I love how consistently Andy and Jason show their age with movies that no one has heard of unless you were born prior to the ni- uh, 1990s. It's amazing. Oh, see, the, the Warriors is way before my time, though. It's like, I, yeah. I, I can drop some hot outsiders uh, now at 92. <laughs> like, where are you going to find where Tom Cruise is like the 12th, 12th uh, banana on a movie? That's, what yeah, I that, that's taking it way, way, way back. Way back. So we're going to jump right in. Andy will, uh, I guess, you know, I feel like most people listening to, to this show will have listened to you on some platform somewhere but I guess I just want to start off a little bit. I, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you ended up becoming the person putting out content every day for the people of Vikings Twitter and all around Vikings related things. Well, uh, I grew up as a, a Vikings fan and my earliest memory uh, was when I, I guess I'd be four. But I remember when Tommy Kramer, NFC title game, Washington, the passage doinked off of uh Darren Nelson's hands. Uh, I, I guess that sort of cemented it. Also, who remembers stuff from when they're four? Unless it was super uh, traumatic, but I guess that fits the bill. But then I uh, got locked in, 98 Vikings, of course, uh, which is a lot of people are our age's stories. And yeah, ever since then, uh, I always uh, loved the team uh, through thick and thin, mostly mostly thin right after thick. Like uh, It's like if you get a cheesecake and then you find out it's a fat-free cheesecake, and you're like, you lied to me. That's what the Vikings are. Do you even eat cheesecake anymore? Oh, yeah, no. See, on the keto, it's like you, you can make a super great cheesecake where it's all fat, a little stevia. It's fantastic. Oh, man, I'm going to need you to send me that recipe. I'm actually interested to hear how that works. Yeah, cheesecake. Stevia uh, cheesecake. Okay. And as far as the podcast, uh, it was weak. I, I always mix these numbers up. It was week 14 of the 2013 season, the Baltimore Ravens game in the blizzard where it was like three to two going into the fourth quarter. And it ended up being like 39, 36 and Toby Gerhardt taking a draw play for 60 yards. Cordero had a, a, a kick return for a touchdown and uh, Vikings still lost because Joe Flacco, who was elite 80 yards, 45 seconds, no timeouts, something to Marlon Moore. And it, it was basically, I wanted to to bitch about Leslie. I was like, yeah, Leslie's a nice guy, but uh, this ain't working out. And so I just recorded like a 10 minute semi rant and I was just going to email it to my friends and I'd be like, oh, that's it. But then one of them suggested, hey, you should uh, make a podcast out of this. And then I Googled what that was and then I tried it and then put a couple up and some people listened. And that's basically how we got to here. So uh, I guess walk us through what that uh, that the starting point was like when you go from just kind of recording a rant about Leslie Frazier, which is something I'm sure many of us wish we we had done, to the point where you go from just a couple people listening to where you you know you have the pod, 
YouTube channel and uh, you're doing all of the things you're doing now. Like how quickly did uh, did everything kind of speed up for you where you realized this was something you'd be able to do really every day? Uh, it's something you'll really realize when you're in the thick of it. You're just sort of, you got your head down, you're working, you never take a you know, bird's eye view of things. And that's basically uh, what it's been where you know, it started out as a hobby and then became a side hustle. And now it's uh, progressing on to uh, more than that, uh, hopefully uh, down the line where it's, it just sort of becomes a part of you where I, I honestly couldn't think of a day where I just wake up. And I'm not like, Hey, I, I have zero thoughts about the third tight end, like Gronklin. It's breakout season. Let's go, baby. Yeah. So, uh, like, how often do you and Eric just message each other back and forth about obscure Vikings, either trivia or like the last man on the roster and some random fact? Because that seems like what you just said right there. That's a very Eric Eager type of thing, where it's just all of a sudden you're getting a reference from, uh, you know, the backup running back from from '83 or something. Well, that's the funny thing was when uh, Eric's on the show or uh, we get together when he's uh, back up here in Minnesota. It's like uh, half of it is, oh, hey, remember Dwayne Clemens and Chad May? Yeah, they were great. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that that sounds about right. Sorry, Prince, I feel like I cut you off there. Were you jumping in trying to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say um, uh, not a lot of people know it. I mean, maybe not even Andy knows it, but. Uh, when I got onto Twitter and roughly like uh, just before the 2014 draft, um, Andy was actually one of the first podcasts that I ever started listening to. Pretty consistent to a show every single week, so you know it was it was just definitely weird to um, you know befriend him and you know kind of look up to him. So yeah, I I, I do say you know Andy, it's always been it's been a pleasure for the last couple of years to. Um, like I said, just no interact with you and, you know, be friends and whatnot. And, uh, yeah. Hey, really appreciate that. Yank. And uh, of course the feeling is mutual. And uh, also I think that you're just trying to butter me up because you're on the show tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's Pretty a good, wise man. man. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Uh, this is a climb in the pocket week because I'm on here, uh, with the CTP proper as well as we got Yank Ed miles at the blue door tomorrow. Then, uh, you know, Jay Reed bopping in on Thursday. It's like, Oh, just run through the entire roster. Yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. And, and I'm glad Yinka brought up Twitter. Cause that was, I think for many of us, most of us, myself included, that was my first interaction with you, but for as much great work and, and hard work that you do, and I don't think that anyone could really knock the hustle. You you put in there, you grind, and, and you get the work done every day. Um, there seems to be like a, a strange kind of you know, hate or I don't know what it is, but there seems to be an underlying kind of, uh, I don't know if it's resentment or what, I guess. Do you feel that? And and are those people who are kind of making the snarky remarks about you on, on Twitter, do they kind of follow you to your other platforms and, and, and give you grief there as well? Or is that something that is just kind of uh, isolated in Vikings Twitter where people just kind of bring their saltiness to you there? Uh, see, the thing is, uh, I've talked to Doogie about this because um, uh, Doogie is Doogie gets a little uh, uneasy about Twitter comments sometimes. Of course, you know, he, he's got a, uh, a larger target on his back as being an actual news person. But I, I think I've just realized that I'm, I, I was born in the future and sent back to the the past because I'm uniquely set up uh, for the age of social media because the, the this whole phenomenon of people 24 seven being able to say directly to you, well, you know, directly through the internet, exactly what they think. I don't care. <laughs> I, I have like zero care at all of what anyone thinks like good, bad or otherwise. So maybe that's, some sociopathic tendencies i don't know but honestly it, it is it is pretty entertaining uh to watch the the timeline burn sometimes like like when people really get caught up in their feels and they go back and forth they start arguing uh and their hashtag mad online it's just like none of this matters <laughs> Why not so even mad? a little bit no. not even a little bit even though you just described like the first year of yink and i knowing each other on the internet with me trying to convince him that running backs don't matter and him not liking that at all, at all, at all. Well, you've been like, wh why are you reaching for a running back at seven when you had Chester Taylor a thousand yard back in 2006? What's going, what, what is happening? <laughs> but uh, you, you mentioned something there about not caring. And that was one of the things that really stood out in that, in that piece that you, uh, that you shared uh, on Medium, where you talked about, 
uh, your your athletic career, football, concussions. And uh, it, it just kind of struck me how even in that you you brought up the fact that you just don't care. Has that always been um, you know, what you've been like or who, you, who you've who you been? Or is that something you've grown into over time where you've, uh, I guess, developed a, a tougher skin since you've been doing this? Or have you always been a guy who just really didn't give a shit what people were saying or thinking about him? I, I don't really know. I think it's mainly just a minimalist thing. You know, like they're there's a very small group of things uh that are you know, important in life and then everything else is pretty much window dressing like you know, when, when people get in like holy wars uh, about things online especially as stupid and trivial as sports ball it's like now nah, th- those are priorities out of whack also it's just a it, it's a complete uh a lack of gratitude for like, how good things are it's like really Really, like, like you're emotionally invested and, and caught up a, uh, about what a, a stranger says to you on the internet, as opposed to um, being grateful for how great this world is. It's wonderful. Like, this is the best time in human civilization to be living, and also probably one of the best uh, simulations. Well, maybe not, but you know. <laughs> and, I hope I hope this isn't the best simulation. I yeah. mean, best time to be alive, no doubt, but. Uh, this simulation, we can we can take a left out of this one at any point they would like to. Maybe get us in, uh, you know, version one B or something. That'd be okay. Ah, it could be a lot worse. It's true. It could definitely be a lot worse. And uh, another thing that you know I follow, I think I feel like we end up uh, we follow a lot of the same things. But you also you you refer to yourself as a, an MMA noob. Uh, how deep into that are you? How much uh, how much time do you spend kind of studying the MMA stuff in comparison to what you're doing with the football stuff? Uh, it, it's definitely uh, a surface level fandom, but it, it's really refreshing because uh, I feel like in football, uh, once you start doing this for uh, a living, it becomes a you really get down in the weeds and that you can't really just appreciate the surface level stuff where for me in MMA is like, yeah, yeah, I'm learning um, some more of the jujitsu stuff, some more of the you know, various martial arts that goes in. But it's just like, oh, hey, that dude's kicking that other dude's ass. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure it's uh, annoying because th- there are some MMA wizards out there who know everything from A to B. But for me, like this is my pro wrestling. Like people are really big fans of pro wrestling, and it doesn't get too technical and it's not too serious. But that's basically me with MMA at this point. Are you still training? Uh, yeah, I roll no gi probably twice a month. Get Yinka out there. Yinka, hey. you need to go train. Hey, you need to go train with, with, with Andy. Yeah. Well, see, here's the, here's the thing, though. I, I, I don't... I think Yinka would like it too much, and then he would end up uh, just, like, murdering people, and he's too nice for that. Yeah, it's good for him, though. It's good just for cla- him. Just collapse and windpipes all over the place. You always tell me all the time that I'm an actor and I need to develop some kind of uh, vice, so maybe that's it. I mean, Yinka, right now, Nigerians are kind of taking over the UFC. Up until Saturday night, I think Nigerians had won 17 straight fights in the UFC. And then, unfortunately, a dude who was the second Nigerian to fight on the card went out there and, and, and the streak came to an end when he didn't know what to do when he got caught in a triangle choke. But, you know, it seems that it's in your DNA, man. Get in there, learn a little something. You might be the next Ultimate Fighter. Or at least yeah. maybe you get to play him in a movie or something. Yeah, a lot of those stunt doubles are making. A oh lot yeah, of money, yeah, so. ju- yeah. Just go Michael B. Jordan uh, in Creed, and then be like, "Hey, I could probably beat Roy Jones," and be like, "Roy Jones is like forty-five, but he'd still whoop your ass." Come on. <laughs> <laughs> is, would you? Would you actually be a stunt double, Yinka? I mean, I, I, I thought about it for a while. I mean, I was doing gymnastics for a number of years, and I. It, that was actually prior to like really getting knee deep. Um, but the problem is, is like gymnastics really kind of destroyed my body. So like my back, knees and neck are not in the greatest condition. I could probably get back into it, but it would definitely speed up how old of a man I, I well, would be. Here's the thing, Inka. If you have back and neck problems, jujitsu is definitely for you. Absolutely. You'll fit right <laughs> in. You'll fit right in with everybody else. <laughs> On day one, you'll be ready. <laughs> Yeah, you hurt just so you know that you're alive, Yinka. You'll, you'll, you'll be good to go. 
But uh, but Andy, one of the other things that uh, that you are are very passionate about when you're not uh, when you're not doing the football stuff is uh, it's really the the food and the working out and the waking up really early in the morning. Uh, what order did those things come in? Like, did did you just you listen to a Jocko podcast and then just start eating steak and, and waking up at 4 a.m.? Or were you already kind of an early riser and, and all those other things just kind of came along with it? Well, I've always been, you know, naturally uh, an early riser, but then, you know, listen to some of Jocko stuff. I was like, oh, I can do this. And so uh, it just sort of took over the fourth thing. And uh, the whole, you know, going to bed at eight or, or nine, it, you really not missing much, especially during the week. And yeah, uh, on the weekends, sure, it kind of sucks. Like maybe you miss a, a social event here or there or you know, a fight or a game or whatever. But it's like, yeah, whatever. Plus, it's great during the week if you get up at 4.30. And so I get up at 4.30, um, you know, doodle around with some emails, get some work done, uh, run a mile, and then just finish up some more work. And by the time the kid wakes up at 7, it's like you're almost done with the day. It's great. You run a mile every day? Yeah, mainly because I, I don't like running at all. So I make myself do it. Okay, so walk me through that there. Like what what you don't like running, so you force yourself to run a mile every day. Why are you doing that? What is the, the thought process behind starting your day with something that you utterly dislike? I know just you know, something to check the box, just a little challenge where I can do it really don't like doing it but i know that it will be beneficial so just knock it out you're good and is this like outdoor running treadmill no i got a treadmill literally right next to me uh in the studio it's great wow okay that's one thing that at, at some point I'm, I'm gonna figure it out like i despise running with a passion and so at some point i probably need to just you know as, as Rogan says, uh, kill my inner bitch and get out there and, and start doing it. Jason, I found uh, basketball has been my my cardio uh, go to. Yeah, but you like basketball. You don't like basketball, bro? No, I like basketball. I'm saying like playing a sport is easy. I'll do that all day. But Andy's starting the day off with something he knows he doesn't like. Ugh, like, be a, me. like. Like a mental toughness kind of thing. No, it's actually really easy. Just uh, try on the treadmill, put some music on. Turn five pass on, then oh, uh, miles done. All right, good. Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe get a treadmill. Maybe I should go for a run first and see if I actually can stick with it for a week before I uh, before I get a treadmill. But yeah, that, that's a uh, super interesting for me. And I guess with the uh, the keto, how did that play into everything else? Was that uh, something that you discovered, you know, kind of through that Jocko Rogan, Tim Ferriss health and wellness kind of. Uh, you know, circle, or is that something you just kind of researched on your own and, and, and fell into? Uh, well, I actually started with uh, a guy named Vinny Tortorich, who's a uh, you know, health and fitness guy, but he does no sugar, no grain. And got onto that, you know, dropped, you know, 40 pounds pretty uh, easily, but uh, been vacillating lately. Definitely been getting into uh, the, the pizza and whatnot. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it's good to have uh, uh, a cheat month, I guess. Is good, but uh, yeah, in terms of just not really a diet, but just changing the way that you eat for long term, because yeah, just like yeah, everyone getting our age, you got some joint issues, you got a little bit of uh, a lower T, uh, perhaps. So, you know, just stoking the flames and uh, dropping some pounds and just uh, trying to be the best version, uh, 3.0 uh, of yourself that you can be. 3.0, what was 2.0? I don't know, 2.0 was college andy and he was way more fun <laughs> did you get the lucid dreams that's what kicked me off of like going super 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 uh keto is that i would just get really 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 crazy lucid dreams when i was in ketosis no uh, but i i want that be awesome. <laughs> yeah basically every night i was tripping balls when i was going to sleep i was like this is too much man <laughs> like it's too much so just some carbs, a little bit of carbs, generally from fruits. Avoid the sugar, but you know ketosis and my and my brain chemistry they do not mix very well. Not even a little bit. But uh, before we went on, and uh, we were talking a little bit, uh, you know, we do have you on. You are obviously someone who who talks and lives and breathes the Vikings. So we have to ask you a few questions related to the Vikings. Uh, what are your thoughts on the state of this team right now? Because you uh you have a lot of takes, 
But as you said, you generally don't seem like you take yourself too seriously. And you obviously you're putting out stuff every day. So you have a lot of takes that, that they kind of fly out there. So we have to get you pinned down. Like, where are you at with this team? What are your thoughts on last season? And, and where do you see them going as we, we get into uh, you know, the thick of this offseason for 2019? I think overall, the Vikings way overachieved in 2017. Uh, they underachieved in 2018. Uh, Kirk Cousins, uh, even though he has his flaws and it and it's not so much the eighty four million dollar contract, it's more of a uh, ROI or you know, what are you getting for that money sort of deal? Because I don't think Cousins is ever changing his stripes. I think he's a top ten ish uh, on a given day quarterback, but really is uh, somewhere in the ten to fifteen range. You can win games with him. You will not win games because of him. Uh, necessarily but that is okay uh, as long as everything is perfect around him uh he can do a- enough you know, to keep in games as long as back Kirk doesn't show up uh i think mike zimmer uh is one of the more underrated defensive minds of his generation and also i think that the fact that they kept anti bar is loki that was the signing of the offseason like that was the move of the offseason because uh you know that 18 hour period when he was going to the jets I don't think it necessarily sunk in to fans how hard it was going to be to replace 55, even though oh, he coasts, he takes plays off. He's like, yeah, get out of here. But uh, overall, uh, pretty hopeful for what they do uh, going, heading into 2019. Uh, I think the ownership laid down the law with Zimmer and Spielman. Uh, I don't think it was an accident that everyone's contract uh, wraps up at the end of Kirk Cousins, because I think – that Spielman and Zimmer are all in with number eight. Uh, I, and sometimes when you go all in, you lose. And if it works out, everyone stays. If it doesn't, everyone is gone. No more chips. See you at the next tournament. And But overall, just snag an offensive lineman. Get some other pieces. This team could be pretty dangerous. The defense is largely intact. And I, I say bring it. But I said I, I'm I'm a little bit more bullish on 2019 than most people are. I, I understand that 2018 was a bit of a disappointment, but also yeah, they're due for regression. So, like you said, uh, you know, it's unlikely that that Kirk Cousins is gonna you know, change his stripes, um, and that if things around him are, are pretty close to perfect, he can be a you know pretty good quarterback. What are you hoping to see happen as we get into the draft that is going to create that situation around him that says? good as you think we can get uh, with, with I guess, the, the ammo that we have left for this offseason? Uh, I ideally come out of rounds one or two with a starting offensive line piece. And even though guard is the, the vacant spot open, even though Brett Jones got resigned, I think he could start in a pinch. Uh, but they should be looking for tackle. And if it's Juwan Taylor, he's my crush. Love him. Great. Jonah Williams, also great. Uh, Dillard be more of a project, but uh, wouldn't mind having him in the building. And if we snag one of those three, kick Reef into guard, and then just you know sort of eat the cost, let him be the fourth highest paid guard league. Who cares? Uh, and then just roll with that. Where you know Cousins was the fifth most pressured quarterback in the league last year, and if you can suture that up, even though he did get a little bit more acclimated uh, to the pressure, you saw. I mean, later on in the season, it just wasn't there. It was rough. Like that Cousins that we saw. Green Bay game, as well as the Rams game, where he's getting going toe to toe in LA, go right after hobbled Marcus Peters. What is up? Like big balls, Kirk. That went away because he straight up floundered in both Chicago games, the Patriots game, Seattle game, all games that the Vikings uh, really needed against primetime opponents. And yeah, you can blame the offensive line, but. It is everything else around him, too. And, uh, again, getting Kirk all of those toys and weapons, like getting him a, a great move tight end, getting him a wide receiver three, getting him all that stuff, uh, giving him a semblance of an offensive line. It's making sure that he's very comfortable. I, I think that's going to give the Vikings uh, best chance of success. But, all, of course, Zimmer's going to take Reed Williams at 18, so it all doesn't matter. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's, that's a question that uh, when I had Eric and, uh, and Nick Olson on on uh, on Sunday night when we recorded, um, that was one of the things that we talked through as we were talking about coaching. Is the strength of the Vikings team is the defense? That is without a doubt the defense has been an elite unit over the past uh, few years, and um, but there are some places where depth is a little shaky. And as you know, Eric will always tell you that 
you know, you're always just a couple of plays away from your defensive, you know, backfield where we think we have depth right now. Um, you know, we're not very far away from, as, as Eric said, starting, you know, Holden Hill, um, you know, Mackenzie Alexander and Mike Hughes, right? So with all that said, and, and us understanding that we need to create this perfect environment around Kirk Cousins, how much of your ammo are you spending on the offensive side of the ball versus the defensive side of the ball, given where this team is and, and where some of the potential holes might be lurking on either side of the ball? Well, I think if you just knock out that one remaining offensive line starter, everything else is uh, carte blanche. I mean, Zimmer can get whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, he can get that edge piece, which it, I think could be a low key need since ever since contract could go uh, could be voided after next year, uh, and also Stephen Wedley is uh, uh, unrestricted free agent. So, yeah, grabbing an edge guy, grabbing some linebacker depth, and and especially grabbing cornerback because you mentioned it, like uh, an injury or two. Things can get rough. And the Vikings, uh, even though the secondary was bad last year uh, at stretches, especially at the beginning of the season, like people don't realize that how much worse it could have been if the Vikings didn't have that depth. Like if they didn't have Hughes before he tore his ACL, if they didn't um, you know, have Holton Hill as a priority UDFA, like it could have gotten really salty back there. And you just look at where these guys were drafted too. Wayne's Rhodes first round picks. Same thing with Hughes. Mac was a second. Uh, Holton would have been probably a third round, third fourth round pick if he didn't have his stuff. So you know the fact that two of those guys, uh, Wayne's and Mac, may not be back next year because they're in contract years. It wouldn't shock me at all if the the Vikings took an O lineman at eighteen. Then all of a sudden, Rick's like uh, Rick and Zimmer are like, ah, uh, you, you know uh, that Rocky Sin guys falling in the second round or uh if julian love or justin lane are just chilling there at 50 then yoink and then people freak out it'd be hilarious for me as well people are definitely gonna freak out eric even said that you know if it was him he might take a, a corner at 18 just to to watch the world burn <laughs> because it would be great uh, vikings twitter would would be no more if uh, something had happened but it might be the right move depending on how the board fell um yeah i yeah uh, kurt yeah i don't know Kirk Cousins, like you said, he's the exact same person he was before he got to the Vikings. Um, I think the contract for for many gave us, uh, yeah, we 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 raised expectations for Kirk in a way that probably probably shouldn't, based on uh, what his entire career had been. Well, yeah, my uh, I think the you know the large part about how eighty four million has become a meme, where it wasn't so much the the figure. It was about who the money was spent on. Where if you had cousins for you know three for sixty, do that all day. Then also keep Sheldon Richardson around. But I mean, also outside of the corners, like hell, when Drew Brees was could have been a free agent for like that half a second, I, I was fully on board to like pay him forty million. I do not care, sort of deal. So it, it's all about relative value. It, it yeah. It really is. If we spent forty million on Drew Brees with the rest of this team being what it was, I think we would have been okay. Yeah, we would have been all right. And I say all these things. I'm very surprised Jinka hasn't chimed in to to say, "Well, who, who are you talking about? We," because we know where he is at with uh, with the Kirk Cousins. But because he also hates himself, he's going back through you, uh, all of last you, season. Do you know exactly how I feel about the Kirk Cousins thing, Jason? Just okay. making sure. You love Kirk Cousins now. You're going back. Yeah, through. You you're finding all his great plays and and making sure that they get posted up there on Daily Norseman, so people know that you can be objective about Kirk Cousins. Exactly. Yeah, I have a uh, uh, weeks three and four coming up sometime this week, so I'm trying my best, Jason. <laughs> How was week three? Awful. It was awful, you guys. Like. And it wasn't all Kirk's fault, obviously. When you're getting blown out 27-0, there's just not much of the playbook that can really help you out. But it was just it, – it was not pretty to watch at all. So there's probably – I think I found one play. So it's going to be a very short post. Week four? Uh, week four, still chopping it up, almost done. So. All right. Well, Yank, I'm going to start with you on this one. Uh, we got our first set of over-unders. And uh, it looks like the Vikings are coming in right around nine. Where are you on the Vikings as we head into next season? You're taking the over or the under at this point. Obviously, we know the draft hasn't happened yet. What, 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 what are you feeling? Over the under on what? Excuse me. Sorry. Nine, nine wins for the Vikings? I'm 
I'm going to say over for the time being. Right Ooh. at 10 wins. Okay. And how about you, Andy? You've been uh, you've been very optimistic about things. At least it's sounding like you're being pretty optimistic about things. Where are you at with uh, with the Vikings? And uh, yeah, nine is is the number going at this point in the season. Uh, I'm gonna go with eleven over. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Eleven. I'm sure at some point on one of your shows you're gonna walk us through uh, how that all wakes up. But eleven is it just because of the. Uh, the schedule being a little bit easier, you think that we're going to have some positive regression on the O line? What's getting you to the eleven wins based on the season you just saw? Uh, a little bit of everything, and uh, also, see, the schedule comes out in like a week or two, doesn't it? Yeah, this is usually when they they drop it to to break up the yeah. the dead zone that is this period of no free agency. And I mean, see, the Vikings, I, the Vikings I, actually announced on their on their Twitter feed that Sean Mannion left. Like that's the point of of, of the off season we're in right now. Uh, and and I, I love this part because I could just make stuff up. Like the video for tomorrow afternoon is going to be why the Vikings should sign Young Ho Koo. <laughs> oh, that that's that's old boy from uh, from San Diego, right? Yeah, uh, he's tearing up the AAF Atlanta Legends, my my team, which is also terrible. He's perfect out there. Yeah, that that was also my team. I made I made a, I made a horrible decision when we were picking those teams uh, on the fly on the podcast earlier this off season, but you just also reminded me of something, but I feel like this might be a little racist because of what reminded me of it. You can't play Sudoku, Andy. Uh, no, I, I don't even know what that is. I mean, you in your article, you, you put in there that you like to play Sudoku, but you're terrible at it. Oh, did I? Oh, no, no. Sorry. I was thinking about my Yeah, no, no. <laughs> okay. My Yeah. I can't play either of these things. Yinka, can you play Mahjong, Sudoku? Do you gamble at all? No, nah, Jason, I'm a I'm a Christian man. Mm. That that hmm. That 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 might take me on a tangent that'll take up an entire show right there. But the uh the the, the Christian man, Yinka Ayende, have a conversation with your mother, see how she feels about all that. When was the last time you were at church on Sunday? What were we talking about as far as football and stuff and whatnot? <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right. Well, you know, we are we are coming to the to, towards the end of our time with Andy here, but I just wanted to, to circle back here. So we're thinking eleven wins for the Vikings. You're feeling like everything is uh, generally speaking going to regress to a place that puts us in a in a better place overall. Other than Kirk Cousins, as you look forward, what is going to be the big storyline about the Vikings that we're talking about at this point next offseason? Uh, next offseason. Well, who is up? Well, Everson, I, I believe, is probably gone. It's unfortunate. Uh, Vikings are going to have to shuffle uh, around with the cap again because uh, the way that Barr's deal was structured, of course, uh, hashtag the cap is a myth. Rob Brzezinski is the, wi- the wizard of uh, cap. Uh, that that contract's gonna come home to roost big in 2020. So they're gonna have a similar spot to this year where they're just up against it again. Uh, but I think Riley Reef will be gone. So the Vikings will have a, a new left tackle of the future du jour coming up. Maybe it's a guy that they draft, maybe it's Brian O'Neill, who really knows. And also, I mean, this is a low key too. Uh Linval's contract gets very edible after uh this season, where also too, he's you know, he's still Linval, but he's not Linval, Linval, you know, where he's going to be 31 and it's maybe closing time. It makes me sad. Yeah, that, that, oh. Ooh, also, Harrison's going to need a new deal. Well, he's going to want to bang, bang out one more monster extension uh, before his time is up and he's 30 now. So now would be the time to do it. So that one's coming up. Also, yeah, basically, everyone is either getting paid or getting cut. It's going to be fire next offseason. Yeah, and uh, is Trey Wayne's on the Vikings as of like week four this year, or oh, oh uh, week four next year of this year, like this, this year? Yeah. You know what? You know, you know what? Um, just because I want to stir the pot, I think the Vikings just barely get to ten wins and have a first round exit, and then they're thinking about uh, bringing Mike Zimmer's thinking about bringing his son home. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Mike Zimmer's gonna go down with, with with his boys, huh? Oh yeah, he's going straight to New Orleans, and he's gonna say, "My son, please come home." <laughs> yeah, you just couldn't not do it. 
Of course not. I appreciate that about you, Prince. What were you saying there, Andy? No, no, I, just, uh, I love that conspiracy theory, too. It's like, well, why do you think Teddy signed a one-year deal? Kurt's going to wave his no, no trick. No, but also this time next year, it's going to be the Holy War debate. Like, say the Vikings do get 10-11 wins, make the playoffs. Maybe it's a one done, whatever. Like some modicum of success. It will be the Holy War antebellum about uh, whether or not to extend Kirk Cousins. Oh, God. Yeah. And of course, but he's I, not He's not going to do it, though. At this point, I, I I don't even see, like, the staunchest Kirk Cousins supporter out there talking about giving him more money. But, like, yeah, you're right. If we even look somewhat decent in some games, people are going to want to pay him again. But Kirk Cousins ain't going to take he, he's not going. He's going all the way to free agency, maximizing his leverage as he does every single time. Yeah, him and McCartney are financial gangsters, like playing uh, out the tag twice in Washington, going to open free agency. He's going to do it again. Uh, it syncs up with the new CBA, where the salary cap could theoretically go up to like two fifty. And like, uh, God, I talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago, where Kirk Cousins' next deal, twenty twenty one, he could be averaging forty million dollars a year. And it, it wouldn't necessarily be an insane figure. <laughs> oh, my favorite part of the offseason has been uh, Trevor Simeon. You know, the fact that we had to have Sean Mannion come here in the first place, that McCartney maxed out Kurt, and then uh, Simeon had to leave so he could go get his money someplace else because we didn't have the uh, the table scraps to give Trevor. <laughs> uh, so McCartney's other person just you know, bounced because Kurt took all that money. That's a good agent. Yeah, it's a very good agent. Very good agent. Dude, there's no uh, no discounts for anybody. Uh, it's like uh, Brady and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo having the same agent. He's like, uh, we got to get these guys separate. And Jimmy G got all his cash. Can I ask? A, can I ask a question again? This is me stirring the pot, but not really. Um, Kirk Cousins was healthy all last season, kind of similar to the year that Bradford came in. Not hoping that it happens, just asking what happens if Kirk Cousins has an injury that you know shells him for you know 15 games out of the season. What do you think the Vikings will do? Um, they will tank, everyone will get fired, and uh, yeah, we hope we get one of those. Uh, that next QB class is supposed to be pretty good, though, right? Uh, is that the, the two class? No, I think uh. Uh, Kyle Jerome Sluter takes him to the promised land. <laughs> Goes full Kurt Warner. Oh, that I mean, on the one hand, that'd be great because you know we would have won a Super Bowl. On the other hand, Don from Ohio would just be impossible to deal with for the rest of all of eternity. Well, here's my thing on, on Sluter like, it's clear that. They're fans of him, even though you know they brought in Simeon last year and they're flirting with another veteran back up here. But uh, his rookie year, when they first snagged him from the practice squad and then had to call him up uh, when the Case Keenum was running things in the early couple of weeks, like there was about seven weeks where Sluter was one play away from being QB1. They're like, okay, let's roll with it. Even though that you know, Bradford was still on the roster and Teddy uh, w- was on the pup, it was just like, whatever. And yeah, Kubiak was in the front office when they got him as a UDFA in Denver, so he's got some clout there. Uh, Kubiak, the younger, was the assistant quarterbacks coach uh, there too. So it's like, I, I think this is the silent coup. I think this is the deep state coming for Kirk, and uh, and uh, Sluter's <laughs> the the Manchurian candidate. That would be amazing. Yanka, would you get on board with that? Sluter is the is, is new QB one. No. Okay. All right. We tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Well, on that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and call this thing a wrap. Andy, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, thank you for staying up a little bit later than you normally would to chop it up with us this evening. Take it easy on Yanka tomorrow. Take yeah, it kind of easy on Yanka tomorrow. I think about it. You can rough Miles up if you want to, but take it easy on Yanka because he gets it everywhere on all the yeah. shows all the time. That's fair. All right, but uh, Andy, again, thanks for coming on. It was a lot of fun. Yanka, thanks for uh, cutting your workout short uh, to, to be with us here. Tomorrow. Oh, oh, we got a full workout in. We good. Yeah. Hit legs tomorrow. Hit legs. See, I'm busy. I got a podcast. Do, do some I squats. Get to. Do a deadlift. It's good for you. I got a podcast. I got to get to, you know. Just, <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, listeners, thanks for sticking with us. Y'all have a good night. See ya.